I think since the crisis broke out in, I think, the second or third week of February, we've been actively de-risking and reducing our exposure to Russian clients. And I think over the past uh, 60 days or so, we have been, and we announced today that we have reduced our Russian exposure by approximately 15% or about a billion euros. And that we have also announced that we do no longer any new business with uh, Russian clients. So we're gradually bringing that level of uh, exposure down in terms of Russia. And that 800 million um, loan loss provisioning is actually on top of additional capital we set aside for our Russia risk of around 1.7 billion. So we feel that we have set aside, given the situation today, appropriately for Russia risk. Good morning, it's Karen jumping in. I want to ask you a little bit more about expenses because uh, that was a, a fascinating line that was slightly different in your results versus the other banks where we've mostly seen expenses go up and whether that's related to staffing costs or inflation that some of the, the various rival banks are seeing. How are you able to hold the line on costs and what do you anticipate from here as we continue to hear from various countries and central banks warning that inflation will continue to rise from this point? Yeah, we, we do, set, do see that in the Eurozone as well. The, the fact that inflation is high, wages are up, and uh, we do see that cost pressure within ING. But having said that, you know, we're, we're one of the most digital banks in the Eurozone, and we have taken a number of cost programs from uh, decisions taken in 22 and 21, which is feeding into our numbers uh, this year. So our guidance for our cost for this year is that despite the inflation, we expect to keep our costs flat or even slightly down this year. Tonight, really nice to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Look, um, everyone always assumes that when net interest margins go up and interest rates go up, it's great news for the banks. But I've always had great concern about that blanket premise. And your numbers make me even more concerned because your first quarter, end of quarter, cost of risk has gone to 62 basis points on average customer lending versus 15 basis points a year ago. Are you more concerned about lending at the moment, despite the fact that your NIMS are improving? Yeah, I, I think if you look at our first quarter results and look at that uh, loan loss provisioning, it's almost related all to Russia, right? The underlying book in other businesses, mortgages, consumer lending, corporate banking, other than Russia, the level of risk cost is actually very benign in the first quarter. But I think one thing that uh, we advocate is really the fact that rate rises should be coming gradually to allow businesses and customers to absorb this higher level of rates. And I think in the Eurozone, we're not really talking about tightening yet, right? It's, it's about normalization of rates, taking interest rates from negative to positive territory. So, so it's, it's a different uh, situation than what you see in the U.S at the moment. Donato, you've been in business for decades. I mean, how on earth can we have a negative deposit rate of 50 basis points when we have high single digit inflation now in many parts of the Eurozone? Does it make any more sense to you than it does to many of our viewers? Well, it, it never made sense to me to have negative rates to begin with. But uh, I think the time for normalization is late. And, and we do expect that the ECB is going to move quite aggressively in the second half of this year. And I think it, it will bring more, more health to the financial system and to businesses and clients as well to have normal interest rate, normal curves applying uh, going forward. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.